young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. Hey, hey, check one, two. Yep, now I'm on. Sorry, buddy. I'm all out of whack today. One of us or both of us are always out of whack, but uh, nonetheless, uh, JR is not in a uh, a different room. It just looks as though he is. I am. Uh, well, welcome back in to uh, the Justin Moore podcast. Thank you guys for, for hanging out with us today. It is a... Uh, a bit of a gloomy type day. It's warm here uh, in in South Central Arkansas, but uh, cloudy. But uh, good good to be back with you guys. And uh, Jr., I, I like the new digs, man. Well, they're Thanks, the buddy. same ones, but they're a little different. Yeah, I just basically rearranged all my crap. Uh, I got it up. You know, we were talking about this before we started recording. You know, I've got a big room here. This is basically like my garage, my shop, everything. It's this big room I got back here. But you acquire stuff. And next thing I know, I've got so much crap on the ground. I'm like tippy-toeing through little paths through my crap. And I'm like, I got this big room. Nothing's on the walls. It's just blank. I'm like, I got to get this stuff up. So I got this bookshelf off Facebook uh, Marketplace. They can see it on the thing. You can't. 20 bucks. Yeah, you actually now have a wall. Yep, and I got and I you got have you have a wall. Yep, you didn't have a well, you kind of did before. Yep, but got me some studio texturing there. Trying to, it's so boomy in here. This is just like a barn, you know. And it doesn't sound bad on these microphones when you're listening, but if you're in there hanging out or talking and stuff, it's just kind of loud and boomy. It feels like you had a factory almost. Uh, so a little texture on the walls make it sound a little better. Try to get some light stuff done. But yeah, basically got all my crap off the walls. Got some new storage for it, and so I could. So I could get through here and do some projects. I don't know what projects I'm going to do, but I've got room to do them now. I noticed uh, the 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 one thing I noticed that was uh, not present before, at least it wasn't visible to me, was the uh, uh, the record player. Yes, to over your right shoulder. Yep. I used yeah. to keep all my uh, stu- uh, stereo equipments on the other wall across the way. I've got my eighty rack Kenwood stereo complete unit there. It's a beast. Sounds so good. Uh, and this is just a, uh, a knockoff uh, replica remake deal. I bought, you know, I don't know who I bought that for, if I bought it for somebody or for myself or something one time just to have maybe in my room or something. And, I bought uh, my dad one of those from uh, like Dillard's or Yeah, I think everybody, like it's one of those, that's, <laughs> that's one of those gifts like an air fryer was two years ago. Everybody got one of these at some point. I know, I remember. I Shreese still haven't sister. gotten one. I've still not gotten one. <laughs> Well, you and I need, one. One. I need to get one. You need a better one. It actually, this. but it plays records though, doesn't it? Yeah, but it doesn't sound worth the crap. We'll get you a good. Oh, okay, one. you need a good. One. You can get you. a you can get a I decent rig for a hundred bucks. It sounds great. This is a fifty dollar combo thing, and it sounds like a fifty dollar combo deal. Which not, I mean, you know, if you I got you. If you just want to listen to something, but I mean, would do you any disservice and let you hear something like that? But anyway, so yeah, now well, it's just for looks. I just needed something to to put some stuff on and add some things there and i've still got too much crap you know always. but that's kind of your style eh, well it's not trying it doesn't jewelry, need to jewelry <laughs> buckles yeah you know it's kinda, that was fun that was but, funny and uh, i'm every i'm sure everybody saw the uh the little meme thing going around this week of hank jr uh saw it on a fiddle with no shirt on and his belt buckle and cowboy hat and sunglasses and it's the caption was something like uh uh, it's official. Hank Williams Jr. just reclaimed the WWF Intercontinental Heavyweight Title. Oh, wait a minute! That's just his, that's just his normal belt. <laughs> it ain't as big as your buckle, brother. I don't think it is, really. To be honest. No, with you. no. Hey, uh, before we get off of the uh, the the vinyl record deal, uh, I do want to mention that um, the vinyl that we have coming out, which is a, yes. a Walmart exclusive, correct? Correct. Um, in red, greatest, all red great, vinyl. Yeah, greatest hits package. Um, we've had to push it back, and it has nothing to do with us or our label or management or whatever. But like a lot of things right now, Jr. the the plant that is, I guess, producing these uh, is behind. You know, right? I, probably a lack a lack of. Uh, you know, people being available to work because of COVID or, or whatever the case 
uh, maybe. But uh, the new date, uh, if you guys are are looking forward to that, is is March eighteenth. Um, March eighteenth, greatest hits package, which is the day uh, we play in Little Rock with George Strait. Uh, the vinyl greatest hits package will be out. Walmart exclusive. I'm assuming you can get that in store and online uh, with Walmart. So, yeah, that's awesome. Another Arkansas company keeping it in the house. I love it. Yeah, um, for sure. I'm I'm pulling it up now. I'm sorry. I usually have my stuff rocking a little better than this. Hey, and I need you to do me a favor if you don't mind. Find, uh, can you find Basil's birthday? Yes. Oh, and surprise, surprise, okay, we're so. having it on our. You can you can introduce our guest if you want to, Jess. I just kind of gave it away. Yeah, so uh, here in just a, uh, actually just a few minutes, we're going to have on, um, uh, we had another guest lined up and they had to push back a week or so, um, but uh, but we're going to have on um, my morning co-host on Morning Mayhem, the radio show uh, here in Arkansas that I've been doing, which we've spoken about on on this podcast, and uh, he's kind of the anchor. He's the the main. He's the quarterback, if right. you will, of 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 our show. And I mean, he's um, a sports he's legend. Done, he from, he's from done Arkansas, so many great you know? things. He's a, he's a great ambassador for our state here in Arkansas. Uh, great ambassador for the Razorbacks. Um, I'll just quickly give you a rundown of some of his accomplishments, if you will. I mean, he, he he's responsible for. And I don't know if you know the some of these, Jr. But he's responsible for uh, Arkansas having a live mascot, which we call Tusk. Really? We didn't have one before him. Um, he's responsible for the Burlesworth Trophy, which is a national award. Dan Hampton Award, which is a national uh, award. The Frank Burles Award, which is a national award. Uh, the Darren McFadden Award, which I believe is only in state. Uh, he created the Battle for the Golden Boot, which is the game, or, or the trophy, rather, uh, for, LSU the, game. for the winner of us and LSU. Uh, the Battle Line Rivalry, which is the trophy for us and Missouri. He's just done so many great things, and he, he does a ton for charity here in Arkansas. Um, great, great guy. Uh, and, this is going to be fun. Just a, just a great ambassador for our state and, and the University of Arkansas. Um, so I guess my point in saying all that is, even if you're not a Razorback, an Arkansas fan, he's done so many things nationally. He's been on the Paul Feinbaum show, ESPN, Sports Center. I mean, it just go, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, and he grew up in Panama City, which I think is kind of interesting. Neato. So he can relate to you and I as far as uh, loving the the golf life, right? You know, yeah. Uh, but just a just a really really good good human being, and and uh, we're gonna have him on. I thought be be some good perspective. Maybe you guys can go back and forth on uh, maybe some of my shortcomings because you both have to handle me, if right? You will. Yeah. Well, and they you know. put, and I listen to the show some, you know, when I'm up early and can get it on my tune in app. Um, and uh, they, they all, I mean, they put you to work on there. So we're going to put him to work. I mean, because it's yeah. all, I mean, you're yeah. fielding questions left and right, buddy. I hear them. I mean, you're yeah. just, you're on. So, uh, and I, yeah. hey, so today was my first day, JR, being late. Oh, I heard. Oh, I listened. Oh, I heard. Oh, you heard? Okay. Oh, I yeah. chuckled so in. You I'm know, sure my he'll inner give me crap about that. You know, my inner TM was good and chuckling on that one. I've been down that road. So, uh, been anyways. there, done that. Hey, yeah. but, but you don't allow me to be late. I well, I hey, I've been late too. It happens, man. I mean, shit. I remember you waking so, me up at your beach house one time saying, "Uh, dude, I think we missed our flight." And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> "Yeah." So hey, he's actually uh, beeping in now. You want to pull him on in? Let's do it. Yeah, let's rock and roll. Here he comes, David Basil, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking forward to this. Hey, he also tackled Bo Jackson. I I I like to hear multiple that. multiple I mean, times, and I believe the Liberty Bowl, if I'm not mistaken, in about in. eighty. It looks like what he's ready to it? kill. It's like you're ready to sack somebody right now. Baz, <laughs> what was it, like 86, 80, 85? You know, JR, the reason he acts like he doesn't know, the reason he acts like he doesn't because I messed up the uh, the, the, the title of one of his songs today, and he just oh. wants to make sure I did. I was, <laughs> I'm just off a little bit. 
Just right. off of that. Well, he's just trying to get the heat off his butt because he showed up late to work today, too. I don't even know if you call it showing up for late. When you, uh, when you when you're two hours, you know, the show starts at six. You got there at eight. You even call that showing up late? Uh, I thought it was like that's <laughs> a half a day. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, that's why we are. That's why when we're on the road, you know, we live together. It's me and Justin on the same bus. So, I mean, there's been circumstances where he could have been two hours late to his own show, but I have to go uh, emergency lock, open door. Hey, buddy, you, your alarm's not going off. Your earbuds are dead or whatever the situation may be. Well, we were counting on Kate to do that, but Kate yeah. obviously not doing that. What did she say? She dropped she the ball. Over. Yeah, she rolled over and said, hey, yep. it's 545. And what did you say? Yeah, she she so Jr. I set my alarm for paid four paid helps and, usually better for that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, I set my alarm for four and four oh nine a.m. and right. I, I realized that I had an earbud in my ear still, so I think that's probably what happened is my earbud went dead. Now that I think of it, but long story short, she rolls over and hits me and goes, "It's five forty five and I go, "Okay, so." <laughs> and and then and, and then like instantly right after I go oh it's five forty five I got to right I, so so for those out there listening I have a you know fifty minute drive so and we start at six so waking up at five forty five is not good I did I did tell Basil I don't know if it was on the air or off the air I said. Yeah, I was planning on just taking the day off, and he texts me. He goes, "Don't get a ticket on the way in," and I'm like, <laughs> "Oh, good lord! All right, well, I guess I'll jump in the shower and try to oh, <laughs> try to get God. on it." That's why, J- uh, Jr. You wouldn't have let him miss the show. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, he go. Uh, uh, can we can we push back? I'm like, man, you better get in the shower. <laughs> yeah. You better, yeah. you better fresh it up. You better brush your teeth. Let's go. Well, we gotta go. You know, uh, I, I've, I've done morning radio for about 20 years altogether, and it's uh, it, you know, Tommy who, uh, who Justin came in at obviously and and uh, replaced, if you will, and you know he'd been doing it for 40 years. I've done it for 20. It never gets easier. It never gets any more fun. It stinks. You always have that holding over your head that when you lay down, you got to get up. And it, we've all done it a few times, but and it's a terrible feeling, like he said, when you. When you realize it, you, it takes you a second, you're discombobulated and you're thinking, oh no. And that you know that, hey, we're all in the studio, get ready to go live. And wait a minute, oh, wait yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, so. yeah. 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 So, so for those out there listening, we, we didn't um, formally introduce our guest today on the, the Justin Moore podcast, but I, I spoke about you, Baz, a little before, just touched on just a few of the things that you've been responsible for. Uh, the Frank Burles Award, the Dan Hampton Award, the Burlesworth Award, the Darren McFadden Award, the Boot, the Battle Line Trophy, Tusk. I know I'm leaving some stuff out. Um, pork chop was that you? Yeah, how about pork that? Chop, pork chop pork and chop. suey. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, pork the chop kid, and suey. Yes, kids know those. Yes, the kid version of our live mascots uh, at basketball and football games. Anyway, the point is, man. In all seriousness. Uh, for those out there listening, Basil is the reason why I'm getting up at 4 a.m. Because of <laughs> not only my my uh, affinity for him as a as a broadcaster and my fandom of him as a broadcaster, but but you know my my respect for you as a as a human being, and I, I genuinely mean that. And um, and so it's it's been a whole lot of fun, and I thought we could talk a little bit of morning mayhem, uh, which is again the show that I'm co-hosting alongside Basil and a couple of other great guys uh, here in in the Little Rock market. But you can listen to it anywhere because we have a Buzz app, B U Z Z app, and so. Um, that's who you talk. That's who you're listening to right now, David Basil, and he's done so many other things. He even tackled Bo Jackson uh, a yeah. number of times, which he will he will uh, remind you of frequently. <laughs> I wouldn't you? Yeah, listen, I, mean, it's, I don't have I don't have ten number ones. Right. I, 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 don't, I don't have I don't have a, a banjo or a guitar. I got bronze trophies. That's all I got. You know. Hey, it, you see this, Baz? I see it. You see what that says? That's strong. Billionaire, billionaire brother. That's, that's strong. <laughs> no, hey, listen. No, I'm, I'm joking. I well, love the, it. The, the difference, JR, between uh, Justin and his career and all those things he just uh, read off is that everything that Justin does makes money. 
everything that I do makes zero money. Nah. Zero. That's it. I'm a lousy, I'm a lousy businessman. But hey, I'm- everybody loves you, buddy. Hey, I would, I do, I will, I'll attest to that. Though I know every time we've done any kind of charitable event in Arkansas or anywhere close, you're always at all the stuff. I sh- we always appreciate yep. your support on all that stuff. I know the St. Jude Golf Tournament, yeah. Boys and Girls Club stuff. Uh, that's always that's that's all, I you know, know. I always know, see it that stuff. You know, Jr. The, the and Joey, who we've talked about on this this podcast, so people know who Joey is. Basil, um, you know, he he always texts me. He goes, "Hey, Baz is going to MC it," and I'm like, "Ah, man, that's awesome." But I I just feel bad asking you because yeah. you you get asked so many times. I know. Well, but we got to start paying but, him. But to <laughs> Jr. To, to, to Jr.'s point, you always say yes and. Uh, that goes into my next point, which I made before you came on, is, man, you've been such a great ambassador for our state, the university, obviously, but, but our state as a whole. And, man, I just couldn't be more thankful for, for all that you've done for Arkansas. I, I was letting Jr. know that you grew up in, in Panama City. So just so you know, he lives in Gulf Shores, oh, Alabama. Yep. yep. And I'm obviously I have a place in Destin. So, yeah, we're all kind of uh, kindred spirits, if you will. Panama yeah, City. You went. You went. Did you go to Troy? Did I? Did I remember seeing that? Yep, right? I did. I, I went to Troy. Listen, when you're when you grow up in Panama City, everybody knows it, it, Troy State and Sanford, yep. and you know everybody Florida State. Everybody knows everybody, and up and down the the, the coast. I, I I was looking at some of the things on all your wall. You got a lot of Bama stuff, Justin. I don't know how you've allowed him to get. There's not an inch of space <laughs> anywhere on this wall got, behind him. I've seen I the Bama. J- I've seen I got it. some JM stuff. Yeah, I've like seen it. It's yeah. Look at that one up there. A true legend. Yeah, I've also seen all the uh, the Bear Bryant, which is cool. I grew up, you know, in Panama City. Right. You know, I grew up, you know, uh, as a young man watching the Bear Bryant show every Sunday. And so, um, but uh, yeah, it's cool. You know, Justin, one of the things that's interesting, and I always take it with pride when somebody says that about being an ambassador of the state. And I don't listen, after seeing your concert schedule, you know, I, I can't fathom what you do, but we are ambassadors when we go. You know, when I represent the Brawls Award with you know all these colleges across the country, and you, you know, you go out and you play everywhere, you are representing the state, and I, and I do lot, take a lot of pride in it, and you do too. And so I, I don't take that for lightly when I see the word ambassador. And I was reading something today, I, uh, Jr. on the uh, uh, on the uh, some of our feedback today. Somebody said, "Hey, J- Justin's a great ambassador to the state." So it's really it's really cool. I couldn't believe. Let me no tell doubt. you, Jr. When 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 Justin tipped off to me that he might be interested. And um, and uh, maybe doing morning radio. I mean, I just he said, hey, he sort of said, you know, if Tommy does retire, he's just sort of, I might I might be interested. And I'm like, I just was, I just, I just like I was catching for a big yes. fish. This was not getting away. This was not getting away. Yeah. That's You're not, like, don't not, let mess this up. Let me no, just ride. Let me play this with just right. Not not too much. Just enough. Let him have a little slack. Listen, that was, yeah. uh, you know, when you lose a guy like Tommy, you can't replace him. And so in, in this market, it's tough in this size market to get guys uh, and ladies who who have the skill set to come in and do four hours of radio. You guys have been doing the podcast long enough to where, oh, it's, you just talk for a living. Huh. Well, you try doing it four hours every day and be interesting and compelling. Oh, it's it's a challenge. And so, you know, I knew that Justin had been on the show enough and, and um, that I knew his sports background, his passion for the Razorbacks, obviously his, his pop culture, music, all those kind of things. Uh, and his name recognition, his reputation in the community. I thought, you know, you're not going to find a Tommy Smith, but you get it's a guy a home like run. Oh, there's no question. And, and JR, the re- response has been so far has been amazing. And so I uh, couldn't have asked for more again. You know, there it wasn't over and under over at Oakland uh, in Vegas on which would how long it would take for him to miss a show or be late for the show, and he made it 27 shows. He made he made, he made it one month before his first uh, oversleep, but that's okay. He's been, you know, you know, again, it's one thing to get up every morning, which is not easy to do, but he's right. got to drive. He's got to drive 40, oh, yeah. 50 minutes, and so we're going to sort of help with that. We're going to get him some equipment to where if he rolls over and, and Kate says it's 5:45, he can say, okay, I'm going to throw on my shorts and go sit down in the office and do the show. So Right. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to we'll have to make sure we get a rig on the bus. Uh it'll be yeah. easy. It'll be easy on the bus because he goes to bed like Papa on the on the road. As soon as the show's over, it, he's usually out pretty soon. And That's then I stay up here. then I stay up till four. So I'll just wake him up when I'm going to yeah. bed and then he can do the yeah, show. These guys bed. these guys don't believe me. Like, oh, I, just as Papa. I, I I'm I'm like a papa. 
He wasn't. Really, now, he was that's not the old Justin, though, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's no, not no. the old Justin. Everybody but had their wild gotta, days. We ain't got to bring that up. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, why are you bringing but up yeah, old like, stuff? Yeah, like nowadays, man. I, I'm what an hour after the show, Jr. I'm, yeah. I'm in bed. Well, I mean, some nights. I mean, it just depends. You know, it depends on what the runs like. We may stay up and watch TV or watch videos for a couple of hours, but not normally um, because we're, you know, if we get in our routine, not just not normally. We're just. We're both married guys now. We don't like we don't go to bars. I tell people that they're like, "Well, you're going to this city. If you check this out, I'm like, I went once back in the day and saw it, and yeah. now we just go to the bus and watch westerns or YouTube videos, or sports. You know, yeah. basically. So I, I, I think so that way we know we can stay out of trouble too. I think the interesting di- dynamic of having both of you guys on here is is you're both kind of you know Jr. We call him the handler, like he handles me. And, and that's kind of your role on our morning show, Baz, yeah. is kind of the handler, yeah. you know, of all of us. You're kind Roger. of the GM. You're more of the GM on the morning show, I'd say, yeah. Baz. Uh, A lot RJ, of personalities my, there to deal with. Myself. Uh, and, and really, in, in all honesty, Baz does 99% of the work, and we just get on there and BS and, and have fun and – uh, but, great, great. Great, but great chemistry. It's great. Always, chemistry's been great so far. We've gotten great feedback. And, again, that's sort of the, you know, everybody, oh, it's easy to do. It's not easy to do to be a conversationalist and also to be able to pivot. You know, one of the things, you know, I talked to Justin early on is that, you know, when we get we sit in that studio and we got four hours, if I throw something at Justin, he's got to come back with me. It's something I, I can't I, – he can't go. I'm not interested in that topic or whatever, and he's got to have that ability, and he has. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. He's been able to do that. And the other thing I think is going to be interesting, Jr., is that uh, everybody asked me, "Well, how's Justin going to do this?" You know, he's going on the road, and I'll tell you, he he went over all of his his, his uh, concert dates, Jr. And I was I was exhausted reading all the cities, but he, you guys have gotten this down to such a fine art, you know, of how you execute this thing, that Justin made the good point. He said, "Listen, I get to sleep in. I'll get more sleep when I'm on the road." Because I don't have to get up as early. I don't have an hour drive. And uh, so he'll probably be better rested when he's on the road doing the show with us. Because my fear was that he's going to be out late. He won't get to bed till 12 or 1. He'd be exhausted. And so we're interested to see. And a lot of people think that, but it sounds right. like that's going to be the case. Yeah. No, well, yeah. and, and I mean, even if we do stay up a little late, you just can't sleep. It's not like sleeping at your house. I tell people that all the time. They say, oh, that's a great job. I said, yeah, you know, some days are better than others. You know, I, I like to sleep at home every night would be cool too. But that's just, this is what, this is my career well, I chose. Right. But it's on the bus. You sleep for a few hours and then you get up. Like half the time when I see Justin in the morning for the first time, he's like, yeah, I woke up at 440. 45 just couldn't fall back asleep i mean that's three yeah. nights out of the week but, you know here's the thing like a lot of people uh baz will and i jr's heard me say this before they're like man that bus is cool and i bet that's awesome and i'm like yeah, yeah i mean it's it's kind of cool but it ain't as cool as like your house yeah, like, right. you know what i mean like like if you gotta travel it's the way to go yeah. but it's like living in a giant uh, petri dish yeah. if you will you know like like it's a little it's a little odd but and there's uh, three of them and it's just yeah, like a little circus it, going from town to town and you got a yeah, truck it, full of gear we set it up and we do the yeah. show then we break it down and go to the next so i always say now when everybody wants me or roger to get hammered i'd say oh let's go dance like monkeys rog here we go oh here we go let's do what they want us to do we're supposed to be drunk guys and we're like we're we're 40 now we're good i mean i still like to turn it up a little bit but it's like i got stuff i'm trying to do you know and jr and jr can tell you like and i'm the worst one i'm self-admittedly i'm still the worst one but i've turned it way down yeah jr can tell you like it, with me, like he's like I've seen Justin like not be able to stand up, and then I say, "Hey, it's time to walk on stage, or it's time to get on the Today yeah. Show," or and boom, like yeah. um, I don't know, you know um, what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, oh, and I knew, it's and like I flipping knew, a switch, and I listen to the show some as I mean, many mornings as I can. I listen on the TuneIn app is uh, yeah. the way I way I do it. I'm gonna get the uh, the Buzz app though that Justin was telling me about, but um, and you can hear this podcast by the way on Buzz too, which is our sister station. Is that one hundred six point seven? Baz, yep, that's it. Uh, here, if if you're in Central Arkansas, um, and I, I'm awful for for not knowing this when this podcast is on that station, but 
Uh, I'm sure you can find that out if you Google it quickly. I, I believe it's on Fridays, but I, I don't know that. Yeah, for I sure. think there'll be links in the show notes uh, to all that stuff. Should have that info in there. We'll make sure it gets up. But yeah, and I knew go, Justin going into it, he could he could do the uh, the BS part. I knew, and especially, and I was talking to Pete, his manager, about this. It'd be like if you picked your favorite thing growing up. You know, your, your your favorite topic to talk about. Somebody offered you a job to go talk about for a few hours. I mean, who wouldn't do that? Pick pick any any person listening. Pick your favorite thing you enjoy and then let somebody say you could go talk about it with some high-level people for a few hours. So, And I knew his knowledge. I tell people all the time, I've never really met fanatical <laughs> this is funny. people. This is a funny rap, Baz. So talk about the – I know the volleyball recruits and the whole thing. Jay. Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, I get to that. But, like, I'm, I live in Alabama like we were talking about, right up the road. You know, Panama City is where we went for – that's where I was 15, 16, high school trips, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, live in Gulf Shores now, but – I know fanatical people in college football, and most of them reside in the state of Alabama. And I know there's crazy people in Texas and everywhere else, but I'm telling you, it's just different here. you know. Uh, but I've met a few people in each state that are closer, if not worse, and Justin's definitely on the worse. He's as, he's as bad as my diehard Alabama and Auburn guys here are in Alabama. And most people just aren't that way. Until I met Justin, I didn't realize. I mean, it's on the bus. I mean, the whole the bus is painted in the helmet colors and stuff. And when he and when we talk about stuff, I've heard how deep he can get on it. I'll mention something. He'll say, "Oh yeah, her. You know, so and so's uh, look good. He's got some good hands." Just say, "Yeah, he's got a little sister too. It's coming up. Play softball. She's in ninth grade. He's got a younger brother. He's in seventh grade. Might be a, might be a, might be a track guy or something." I'm just That's like, right. "Yeah, right. they're from so and so. That's about thirty miles south of so and so or somewhere else." I'm just like, so I knew going into that. Did you guys know how knowledgeable he was on Arkansas stuff? Well, you know, it's, it's you know, we, I had a feeling, you know, I know he spent so much time up on the hill that, uh, you know, that I knew that he was he was locked in. And, and but I tell you, you know, one of my little ploys in, in, in building this up was to get him a, a weekly gig on the show, a little 15, 20 segment minute segment every week. And and you could hear it. I mean, you, you could tell it. And I, and I don't even know if Justin remembers this. So over the years, you know, we became friends and do all the charity events, do the things and we had each other's number. And I think it was during the Bielema era. I, I guess it's when it was. Uh, we lost a game, Jr. It was it was just a tough the way we <laughs> lost or something. And he left a message. He an he, audio an audio. audio he, he left an yeah. audio message that I kept for about four about three or four years. I, I don't know what's happened to it now. He was so angry, so <laughs> upset. Oh, I saw it. I'm sure oh, I, I mean, saw it. it. It went on for for a solid you know two or three minutes. And again showing the passion that he has. Uh, and so we knew coming in, I, I knew that, that, that be, to be quite honest with you, our show's been barbershop radio and it right. will always be, but, but his passion for sports will actually, you know, help us focus a little bit more on sports, get a little bit more serious because that was not Tommy's thing. Tommy loves sports, but not to the degree that, that Justin does. So it, I think it gives a good balance, but I, I will say this, but there's one, you know, if you ever been around somebody who, who never stops talking and, you know, there's there's a way there's a there's an internal clock that knows when you got to shut up and when you got to and he's got that. You know, he's been on stage, you've done interviews to where you've got all that knowledge. You got to be able to know when to shuck your job, when to pass the ball, and right. and that's something that he knows how to do. In addition to to, to loving sports, so I, I knew that he would come in strong, and especially Razorback strong. I mean, right. it's one thing if he just loved the Dallas Cowboys, okay, but he loves the Razorbacks and locked in, and that's what our audience loves. Just like in Alabama, it's the same yep. way. You know. Yep. That's the franchise here, so I, I knew he'd come in strong on that. So let's let's shift gears from from me to you. You always like to deflect and <laughs> and and not uh, speak highly of yourself, uh, which you should. Uh, He's been practicing for twenty years. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, like to, I don't like to talk about me. I, I so, don't want to uh, in, in talking about y'all. Well, just just for our listeners though, and our yeah. viewers, um, like give a little bit of a backstory on your recruitment. Yeah, uh, just kind of your whole story. I mean, I know that's a that's a really uh, boring question, but I I think yeah. a lot of our viewers would and listeners would be interested in knowing. I mean, you played for a Hall of Fame coach and and were recruited by him and I, I just think it's very interesting yeah i, I certainly know it but yeah a lot of our folks probably don't well you know i'm one of the few guys from florida that came to arkansas not we, the razorbacks haven't had many guys from florida and really more in the last 20 years than there were in the previous 60 years and so you know i was in the panhandle playing football i was well i was on a terrible team my sophomore year 
laughing stock of the state of Florida. Uh, probably would have never, you know, if I'd gotten a scholarship, it'd have been lucky. I had some good natural ability, but we had some good football coaches move in my junior year. And in two years, we became the number one uh, team in the highest classification in the state of Florida. So wow. I was recruited by Coach Holtz and Vince Dooley and Bobby Bowden. Uh, was not recruited by the Auburn and Alabama schools. Uh, Howard Snellenberg at Miami, uh, South Carolina. And uh, and so it was not an easy, you know. It's was funny. Bowden at Florida State at the time? What's that? Yeah. Bowden, was, Bowden just, oh, he was. Okay. Bowden got there in 78 and it just turned that sucker around. In like two and three years, they had become a, a recognizable powerhouse in 1980. And so. And Dooley was at Georgia? Dooley was at Georgia. They won, you know, obviously they won the championship in 80 with Herschel. So that was my senior yeah. year. So. Uh, and they were what, running what the, high school, Basil. I was at uh, Panama City Mosley, which Mosley. was a relatively young school at the time and had done nothing. Um, but you know, again, I was an undersized guy, so all uh, Georgia was running the exact same defense we did. And I, I thought, man, it's I'm, they, under, they had undersized linebackers, I was an undersized guy, so I almost thought about going there. And uh, and of course, you know, Florida State was coming up, that was right near my house. In Florida, I was recruited by down in Gainesville. Miami was not Miami yet. You know, Schnellenberger, that was a couple years away, just two years away. If I'd have gone there, I'd have won a national championship. Wow. But, I haven't but, thought about that. That's right. Wow. I, I, maybe even two before I was done. I know one for sure. But, you know, there was an alumni there in Panama City from Arkansas that wrote Holtz a letter and said, you ought to check out this kid down here. He loved the Razorbacks, and he's the only guy in Panama City, you know, that knew I never, I never knew. I never knew that. That's right. So he wrote a letter. Uh, and they sort of reaching out to me. I was a good kid. I was a, you know, high grade point average kid. I was a student body leader kind of stuff and team captain. And so they knew they were getting a kid that was, you know, that was good off the field, you know? And so, you know, what intrigued me about that is that, that on my neighbor, in my neighborhood, you had, I had a kid down there who was a Florida state fan. You had a guy over there who's an Alabama fan, uh, you know, all these different loyalties on my block in Panama city. And I started getting all these articles from uh, the Democrat and the Gazette. Back then they had the newspaper war. So, so the coverage of the Razorbacks were, you know, it was like 10 pages a day. So I was like, oh, my gosh, I've never seen so much coverage of a, of a college program. I said, that's unbelievable. Because, again, nothing. And only there. one program. That's right. That's right. There are other colleges, but nothing, you know, it was the flagship. It was the, the big boy. And I thought, man, if, if I could get up there and do well, and succeed on the football. Now, again, I'm 16 years old thinking this. If I, can, I think this, listen to this, Jr. Because I think you're going where I, yeah, you 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 you've discussed before, which is incredible insight as a 16 year old child. A yeah. Child. I, I was. I, was I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that's right. I just I just thought I thought if I could do well as a Razorback, the the way this state embraces its players, like nothing I'd seen down there in that my neck of the woods, um, my post career would be more. Um, you know, uh, fruitful. It would. I'd be able to do more things. I'd be able to have an impact. And I, and I told you, bigger Justin, network, thought, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, you know, you know my, my faith was very important. I remember praying. I said, God, send me somewhere where I can do cool things and be impactful when I'm done. Right. And so, so Holtz was the coach. And hey, David Badger, we want you to come up here to the University <laughs> of Arkansas and be an outstanding linebacker. Uh, coach Holtz was great. You know. And so. Uh, I didn't even take my, I didn't even take my, which I regret now. I did. I took a visit to Florida state, Florida, didn't take my visit to, uh, to Miami. Didn't take my visit to, to Georgia, which I regret just to be able to be there. And uh, George Rogers was in South Carolina. He won the high, I regret that. I regret that. I just didn't experience that, but I made up my mind. I'm, I'm going I'm to play for coach Oates in Arkansas. And I swear if, if everything that I thought might happen has come true, I could not have written a script to say that's a, when I was six, Hey, 16 year old David, it worked out exactly because I've been able to do a lot of neat things and the state's been good to me. And it's been fun to be a part of the, you know, quote ambassador to the state and, and, and create awards for guys that are very worthy and uh, promote sports and all that. So it's really been a, an unbelievable, of course, I'm an only child like Justin. So Jr. I left, I left my mom and dad. So my mom and dad did not miss a game that I played in. They drove from wow. Panama City wow. to every game. Does that not sound like my parents, Jr.? Right. Oh, totally. hundred percent. hundred percent. So it was uh, wow. it was it was a long haul back then. You didn't have the nice highways like you right. do now, and so they would, and they owned a car wash, and they would drive sixteen hours, and then they would get back Sunday night exhausted, and Dad would get up and open the car wash the next day and do that. But they had a blast doing it. We had some good teams, and uh, but yeah, and, and of course, you know, after that, I I have I've milked my five year career into a very impressive thirty five year 
uh, you know, very low income, but residency career. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. JR, is that not amazing though? That like really it always, is. Blows, it always blows my mind to have the insight when he tells this to have the insight as a 15, 16, 17 year old kid that, Hey, you know, or be so forward thinking to like, you know, I need to think about after football. Like, well, I wouldn't it, have thought that no, way at well, that and, age. You know, I didn't. Of, it's kind of a thing I these mean, days that people are trying to set up by, to get exposure. The young athletes are and stuff because the way things have changed now. But back then, no. Was there somebody that you that you that come out of anywhere? Did you did you model that after somewhere? Did you see a ball player on on a TV commercial and thought, hey, maybe no, just on your own? That's awesome, brother. Yeah, yeah because. It, I mean, because you, you, but it makes total sense. Justin, I say this all the time. It's one of the things we think about the new uh, transfer port, portal and uh, a lot of things like that. The when, NIL when play, stuff. And if if you play your cards right and go to any big school and play good, even if you get hurt or don't go pro, or I mean, if you just saw, you'll get a gig. You'll get to work at a car Insurance, dealership. You'll, car you'll dealer. get on a radio show. Yeah. I mean, you'll get some form of employment to where you don't. You'll have something post, if, if along with your education, if you play your cards right on that. Um, but now they're doing that. They don't have the loyalty, so it's like you'd leave and go play somewhere else. Like, well, no, you can't come back here, you know, kind of thing. So um, I don't think there's the foresight, which may go back to who's, that's was, who's their inner circle, who's advising them. But you knew then you know that that, I mean? that loyalty would pay off if you did your end right and worked hard and did everything you said you needed to do to hold up your end. And because the, the media and publications were out there for you to get the exposure. Wow, that's very – Well, you, yeah. you know, too – And I don't want to – Go ahead, Go ahead. Go no, ahead. I, I was just going to say, like, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like your faith was a big part of that, your faith in God. Oh, yeah. You know, again, being an only kid like you, you know, you, you, you leave 800 miles away. Of course, you know, down there, in my, where I'm from, everybody goes, going to Arkansas. You know, down there, nobody, they, you know, they heard a little bit. Yeah. We were in the SEC back then, remember? That's a Southwest Conference. So, you know, uh, it, it was something, and I was sort of a loner kind of guy. You know, I had a lot of my buddies that did the beach thing and did the party scene. That just sort of wasn't my deal. But, but you know, the other thing I always tell tell people is that, you know, some people go, oh, he was a Razorback. That's why he's been able to do this or that. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of guys who graduate, a lot of girls who graduate from Arkansas that were Razorback athletes that that maybe didn't, you know, that, that you know, didn't want to work hard or whatever. You Listen, just because you're a former Razorback doesn't mean you're going to be successful. You got to bust your butt. You know, you got to right. work hard. And, I, and I've always been willing to do that. That's never been a thing that, uh, you know, to my, probably to my my mother's chagrin, just the fact I have no kids. And, uh, but, but, but it's been a fun run, man. I've been able to do and meet some neat people, uh, you know, legendary guys like Frank Brawls and, uh, you know, Jennings Osborne, things I've been able to do here in this state and, and, and you know, guys like Justin, you know, been able to do, you have unique experiences, man. I, I treasure that. I treasure my friendships. And I think you know, God, I've been here since I've been here since 1985. It's hard to believe that I've been here that long, but you know, Arkansas people are so good, man. I, I tell you, I always tell people when I travel around the country doing some of these awards that man, people in Arkansas, it's legit. They are super nice. I mean, I, I want to say they're nicer than any other state. Somebody may challenge me. But but they are just as you know, just folks here, are just you know, oh, yeah. beyond kind. But, and and they've loyal. adopted me. They've really adopted loyal. me. Yeah. You know. yeah. Oh, you definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you you go through they, Arkansas. Anybody who's not been through Arkansas, you ride through Arkansas. Every yard's got a hog. I mean, it's that. I mean, you guys you eat up with it. I, I will it. say. Yeah. I will say this is that I joke, and this is uh, even though I joke about it, it's true. I am overexposed. I have been overexposed in this market. To, to probably people are sick of seeing me or hearing me. But it's funny, my dad, I, I enjoy that my, my, my dad's still in Panama City. I got my mom to move up to Little Rock here. She's been here, which has been a great blessing. Uh, but, you know, anybody that goes to Panama City that runs into my dad by accident and somehow my dad says, my son, you know, went to Arkansas back in the day and he throws out my name. Of course, oh, yeah, you know, the, you know, Channel 7 covering the hogs or used to play or doing buzz or whatever. So, that's fun that my dad can hear that kind of feedback to know that his boy went up there, didn't come home, but's up there doing some things and being active, involved in the community. Made good, yeah, yeah, yeah made good, recognized, yeah. kept your well, nose clean, the, the whole yeah, thing, yeah, right, yeah. So, okay, so we talked about the foresight you had as a 16-year-old in high school. Let me, Lord, let me go somewhere where I can make a difference, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but. Uh, uh, more or less, that's kind of what you were thinking, I, I believe. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So talk about some of the things you've been able to do, because I mentioned a few of them. And I didn't even mention the touchdown club, which yeah. is, which is amazing. I mean, some of the, the folks that you've brought in to Little Rock, Arkansas, when no one else could have or should have or, or, you know, had the opportunity to, et cetera. But just talk about some of the awards and and trophies and all all of the above, if you will. Well, you know, my, my dad really did a good job of saying, if you're going to do anything, be the best at it. And, of course, Justin and I share the same thing, Jr. when it comes to if we're doing it. I told Justin very clearly on the front end, I, I'm not doing this for fun. You know, Justin's coming on board. We're here to win. And right. you know, we, we're judged by our ratings. And so we're going to have a good time. But, but we're also here to put out an amazing product and, and to win. And that's sort of been my you know application, anything I do. And so. You know, somehow after I got out of school, I opened up Gold's Gym with a buddy of mine, the first Gold's Gym franchises here in, in Arkansas back in the 80s, and started getting involved with different things. I was involved with this, this group called the Major Sports Association, a little group and uh, of people promoting sports. And I got to looking around. As, was that know, statewide, Basil? Uh, no, was... it was just here, just here in Little Rock. And I, oh, I got okay. To, yeah, I said, like, what can I do here to help promote, you know, this this organization? And so – you know, I got to look and I was looking at the, the program. I saw where Frank Bulls, you know, had all these amazing assistant coaches. I was like, I never noticed, you know, Barry Switcher, Johnny Majors, Jimmy Johnson, Hayden Fry, Jackie Sherrill, just to name a few, you know, that's it. And I was like, all these guys coaching under Bulls. And I thought, you know, there's not an assistant coach of the year award. And I had no experience, but I, I'll guarantee I'm going to figure out how to make it work. And so, um, put a plan together and, uh, went to coach Bulls and, and he made it real tough on me to, you know, Hey, you know, if I'm going to put my name out there nationally, you, you better make sure you know what you're doing. And yeah. of course, Wilson Matthews, his longtime favorite assistant, was there. And so I did that in about six months. And and hit up. Matter of fact, if you you know you'll sit right there, uh, that's a, a five thousand dollar trophy that's given to the winner every year. Uh, and the first year we did it, it was you know when I had Bo Schembechler on our selection committee, Daryl Royal, Grant Taft, Vince Dooley, all these guys came into Little Rock that first year to support the, the award. So it started out, of course, they were the one to decide the winner. And so now we've been doing that for 26 years now. Wow. And, you know, and there've been some amazing winners, some from, from Alabama, JR, as you know, and um, it's been really neat, not only for the winners, just finalists, you know, finalists get a, you know, a hundred thousand dollar bonus or a 500,000 bonus, or they get a job and you see everywhere. He was a Brawls Award finalist that yep. in all the bios, you'll see it. Oh yeah. So that's really neat to be able to not only, you know, reward these guys who really work hard, but also to help the legacy of Frank Brules hang around. The yeah. People remember he was so good. And I, I think I sent you an article, Justin, about uh, Frank. Back yeah. then, he was just like Bear Bryant. He, he let his assistants coach. Right. He, and he picked out great assistants. He told them in the meetings what he wanted, and they executed. Oh, Don Bro, uh, Joe Gibbs. I left up Joe Gibbs. You know, won three yep. Super Bowls. But that was an assistant, you know, all under Brules. And so, you know, you know Justin is an artist. And that's the you know, same we, way he runs his business, though. That's that's yeah. He, it's, that's what I was gonna say. He, he, he's an artist, so he, he he knows how to grind. He wants to be number one. Uh, he's an artist. He likes to be creative. It's an art. Like for me, you know, whether it be like the Touchdown Club. If I if I'm gonna do the Touchdown Club, I want to be one of the best in the country. Right here, here in Little Rock, you can't you, you can't fly anybody in here directly. You know, everybody. And so you're trying to convince Mike Ditka and all these people. You know, you can't pay as much as you would normally pay if you were in Dallas or you know, Atlanta or New York. And so, you know, you grow. So we, 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 uh, pardon my interruption, but Jr. we didn't have a touchdown club until David Basil. I know that's amazing. So you, you brought in, name some of the guests, Baz. I mean, I mean, even if you named this year, it would be ridiculous. And over the the years, the Royals award. I'm glad you mentioned that and did some explanation on that because any sports fan, uh, college sports fan has heard that term, that name of that award. Every time it's off season or you hear that name. So Kirby Smart was a finalist. He he just may not be aware. Oh, he he won it. Okay. Yeah, all yeah. those guys come through Little Rock. Every right. one of those guys. Hey, hey Lincoln Riley. Lincoln yep. Riley won it when he was assistant at Oklahoma, became the head coach of Nazareth USC. So, of course, that doesn't mean a guarantee you're going to be a great head coach. But, um, but anyway, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then, the, you know, the touchdown club, you know, I'll tell you, you know, uh, Justin makes a good point. You know, JR, if you, if you look at Alabama in Mobile, uh, t- uh, Birmingham, in Atlanta, Georgia, their touchdown clubs have been around for 70 years. 70. Right. And so, you know, we started from scratch in the early 2000s. And so 
we've had to grow this thing with great sponsorships. You know, Simmons Bank is our main sponsor. And uh, and then you have to work your network, you know, my rules were network and all that, because, you know, you know, for example, we had Terry Bradshaw come in and, and, and that was because of a doctor here in town that worked on his knee that, that, that have that connection. Eli Manning, uh, just a friend of the family that, of course, now they're still now, now Terry was kind of Terry didn't even charge us, which was remarkable, but, but, you know, Eli wow. Manning, you know, we've had, we've had Archie Manning, we've had Eli Manning, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned Dick, uh, uh, you know, uh, guys on, um, uh, mean Joe Art, Green. Mean Joe Green, uh, Marcus Allen, uh, you know, uh, Game Day, um, Desmond Howard. I mean, wow. there's so many of I can't, you know, you know, I can't even think of all of them now. Yeah. But but what's what's cool about them is when you know they, they all they they come in, these speakers come in, they go, wow, this touchdown club is amazing. The energy because you know we don't take it for granted. These people don't get to see these kind of names, you know, every every year. You know, I remember Petrino came back last year and the place was packed mm. and he cried and standing ovation yeah. and even brought in urban Meyer. I mean, it was very controversial at the time. And, you know, you bring in, but anybody you get like that, that these people normally don't have access to, it means more to them, you know, Michael Lervin and hall of famers. And we've done this now. I probably booked 200 and 220 guests. You know, one of my favorite, one of my favorite stories. And how old are you? How old are you, Jr.? 42. Yeah. You're a little bit older than Justin, but, you guys remember the coach at Nebraska, Tom Osborne. And I, yes, I may sir. have said this on the air. I don't know if you've heard the story, Justin. So, you know, one of the things I enjoy, I enjoy working with these guys. And some of them can be a little bit demanding. You guys know that. You guys work in the business. Who, but I'll never forget, I was trying to get Tom Osborne to come here. He was in Congress, I think, at the time. And T Tom was on my selection committee for the Brawls Award. So I called him and uh, I said, Coach, I said, I'd like to bring you in for the Touchdown Club. I said, uh, I said, like to, I said we can pay you. The back then, again, this was back. 10 years ago. I said, I'll pay you 4,000 bucks first class ticket. He said, David, he said, man, he said, I'd really like to hit that $5,000 mark. So it's like, Tom no Osborne is shaking me down. Kidding. Tom Osborne shaking me down. Wow. Hey, what can For you say? Grand. Hey, what can For you say? Grand. Yeah, like he, I mean, like that's go make or break. No, you, but I, you're like, you know what I said, I said, coach, I said, I want Tom, Tom Osborne shook me down and he got it. Here's your thousand coach. You got it. But, yeah. but those, those wow. are, funny. you know, and, uh, and guys, you think that maybe high maintenance like a Ditka, you thought maybe would come in and be, you know, you know, Roger Stallback was great. You just you just had all these different guys. And what's really cool, like Roger Scott, Justin, Roger was named after Roger Stallback. Right. And so to see these some of these folks that see people that have been their idol uh come in and, and they get a chance to meet them. Or when Terry Bradshaw came this year, everybody lining up to to see him or try to get a picture with him. You know, that makes me feel good. You know, my, my, one of my favorite compliments about the Touchdown Club, and Justin, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but JR, you know, we have a lot of seniors and retirees in this Touchdown Club. And some of them, no joke, drive an hour and a half to two hours every wow. Monday to be there. Wow. And so we don't open the door until, I think, 11. And there are people standing at the door, and there's a line wrapped around an hour, like at 10 o'clock. They're there to get the best seats. We call them the door rattlers. And so yeah. you know what? I don't make a dime. never have made it up. But you know what? That's that's all the payment I need to see people Absolutely. enjoy it. They get excited. And they're talking about hog football, which is better now. They're talking about, you know, high school football and just, you know, people love football in this state. So it's been a lot of fun. Well, it takes you back, no matter your age, it takes you back to when you were a little boy and you were throwing the touchdown pass to yourself or you were Michael Jordan with five, four, three, two, that's one. Right. Yeah. And to me, that's the greatest thing about sports. It, it, it can expose the the kid inside you. Yeah, you know, it's right. like the first time you see, first time you, you, you go to the Magic Kingdom and Disney World, you're like, wow. Even if you're 40, it's that's still right. like a wow, man. Yeah. You're just, it, yeah, that, you know, it's that's the same it, kind of deal. That, you know, I remember that, you know, say, talk about that kind of, you know, that one year we had, I brought in Larry Zonka, Mean Joe Green, Two Tall Jones and Earl Campbell, all in the same year, and you should have seen, like you just said, just the, the the smiles on people's faces. And the good thing, all those guys were great guys. Earl Campbell, he had heard that me and Joe Green did not sign autographs, and sometimes I'll, I'll deal with an agent and just said, "No, Joe doesn't want to sign anything. That's cool. Don't want to take pictures. I don't think. Maybe he took pictures." And so Earl Campbell had heard that. So Earl got up there on stage, you know, here at the Touchdown Club. He said, "I want to let everybody know I'm not like me, Joe Green." I'll sign everything. <laughs> the, line, the line was like 45 minutes. I mean, it was like 45 minutes long that he signed everything. And so, 
you know, that's when I, you know, that's just, just makes me really feel good to where those people had a special memory, like Justin was talking about, that makes you feel like a kid again, you know. So it's worth, yeah, all, it would, worth all that hard work. Yeah, to go all the way back around, though, like to, to, to you being a, a great ambassador for our state, which you are and continue to be, uh, I mean, that brings – even uh, tourism to the state people sure. come to hear these yeah. people and yeah. and when you talked about you know the the level with which you guys uh you in particular and and all the folks that help you with this handle these people and the production that you put on and, and these particular speakers go wow man this was amazing and the accommodations yeah. were great right. and the travel yeah. was easy and they and tell all. their buddies just, when they, if they great, ask you know yeah. yeah, it's a great look for for, yeah. for Little Rock as a city, great look for us as a state, and, and I just want to personally thank you for that because it's uh, all all of that matters, and, and uh, it's it's one of the reasons why I'm so prideful in being an Arkansan uh, is because of folks like you, and, and well, so uh, I listen, appreciate that. And that's, so listen, I know we got to – now, Jr. Now he listen. He's going to say that now, but on the other hand, he's now he's learning more about me. To where while I may be doing all these, well, you're things, a weirdo. There ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> I mean, I love you, but hey, get, I want, Jr. Jr. What would you say to this? Okay, he said this on the air. The, uh, I believe it was last week. I've pulled the trigger. <laughs> on a mailbox after living at his house for. What a year, two year years, half. year and a half, year and a half. I've pulled the trigger <laughs> on a mailbox. Jr., do you have a freaking clue what your mailbox even looks like? <laughs> I, I do. I, well, what what was that from, Basil? You didn't know that what kind of mailbox you wanted. Thank you, Jr. See, I'm I'm a detail guy, Jr. And I I've got it. this contemporary house, and I and I've just I've been busy. I'm trying to do stuff on the inside, and I never have found. I, I've got a little cheap old mailbox on the ground that the. The postman has to put it, you know, on the ground. So I'm trying to, so I finally found something. I spent about an hour online trying to find it. So boom, I, I'm getting it. And so I mentioned that, and Justin looked at me like, "What in the world?" Gracious. <laughs> I, I, I called get you it. a weirdo over the air. I get it. I get it. Everybody's different, man. I get Wait, it. I get it. Everybody's got their own quirks. I promise you. He's. I'll, I'll get you a little. I told him this the other day. There was something y'all were talking about. I wanted to call in, and I tried to call. and couldn't get through. We so get I need you a, on the show, yeah. Yeah, I need, a, bat, we, I need, we a, need a bat a week, line. Yeah, we need yeah. a weekly segment with JR, my handler. Uh because on, on I know the, there's some the morning mayhem. Because yeah. morning I can get y'all some the morning mayhem. <laughs> morning mayhem, and it's mayhem on there. That's what I say. Boy, you guys get after it. Uh, yeah. But he I said, can boy, get y'all talk good... a lot, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I could get you guys some tidbits on Justin and some fact checks and some fun stuff to to help uh, to help with all that. That would be great. Uh, but but yeah, I, so I get it. Like I said, he's got a ton of quirks. I, I'll drop some well, of those sure on you when you need them. We'll, we'll get to we'll get when to you need them. You let me know, buddy, for sure. Yeah. Well, hey, listen, did you know there were buttons on the you know that the, did you know about that there's no on- I, I called it late i called it late what's the difference in that the buttons are different on women's shirt than men's opposite thank side you. had never heard that in my life thank oh you my gosh. oh my gosh but see i'm weird too baz i know i know the drummer in every classic rock band you could name off the top of your head you know what i mean weird good. stuff like, like that. that hey speaking of i want to switch for just a sec because i know you got stuff to do because you're a busy man you got 400 jobs and only two of them pay but that's okay you're doing pretty well you could spend a year <laughs> waiting on a mailbox and, and i bet you didn't even care how much it cost uh so let's talk about music real quick all right so baz you grew up in panama city did you fish and stuff outdoors or just sports I, I, all that know, my CB handle when I was a kid was called the speck catcher. Love so it. I used to catch speckled trout <laughs> on a regular basis. Love That's right. I, all I cared about was playing sports and catching fish. I didn't care about girls at all. So I love it. One of my, uh, I, I went to school at Troy. I was a pie cap. I got a ton of fraternity brothers from down your way. And I, the ones that I know are from Panama city. They're all fishermen. I mean, Jonathan yeah. Snyder's probably on a boat right now somewhere fishing something, but uh, what kind of music were you listening to in high school? When you first got to pick your own, obviously when we were kids, we like, you know, Mickey mouse or whatever, then your parents, whatever they like, when you got to start getting into your own, when you could change the radio and your own stuff or bought a tape or a, uh, something like that, or CD. What what was Baz listening to when you first started listening to music? I swear to you, this is a true story. Is that I didn't listen to any, I didn't listen to any secular 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 music at all during my during my junior high and high school years. All I listened to were two things: gospel because of religion. Yeah, gospel. Okay, gospel 
and Elvis. Those wow. were the only that. So I knew I all knew every Elvis song because my grandmother introduced me to it, and I was a big gospel. Now, now, now listen. I mean, back in my age, we had you know the the uh, uh, Saturday Night Fever soundtrack, right. and you had Queen. So I listened to that, but it wasn't what I wasn't really locked into music. Yeah. I've been locked into music more than the last twenty five years than ever doing the show with Tommy. But, but right. growing up in high school, I was not locked into. So it was gospel and and, was and, gospel, and Elvis. Gospel groups, yeah. Well, which is which is weird because you want to call Justin a weirdo. He's not a huge Elvis fan, which is weird. You guys are the two biggest Elvis fans I've oh, ever met who, in my life. No, Justin. No, Justin. Everybody but you is a huge <laughs> Elvis fan. Yeah. Hey, hey, so, hey! Tell, tell Baz uh, your your whole rap about Elvis. Uh, they call him this where? Oh yeah, you know what yeah, I'm talking you know, about. I mean Elvis. They call him the king, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, when he when he when he goes and plays in Japan, you know what they call him? The king. You know. So wherever he, the king, the king, the king. I mean, it's the king. He's still the king. Wherever he goes, he's still the king. Which he didn't. Which he didn't. Unfortunately, because his manager, which is when you get a bad handler, you don't do enough background. He had a bad handler, and he never got to play outside of the states because. Uh, uh, Colonel Parker had um, didn't have immigration status. He was illegal. He was a criminal. He wasn't so. a colonel. He wasn't even a colonel. He was a he was appointed by Jimmy Davies, the Louis, the governor of Louisiana, who was a I former uh, entertainer from Nashville. But yeah, so he was not a real colonel. He wasn't an army colonel. He's like a Kentucky colonel, which is like a Louisiana colonel. Justin, type thing. this guy needs to go to Graceland with us. He, oh he yeah, he, 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 Oh, I, we used you, to he, take he, trips he, growing up every for like Christmas. We would go to Graceland he, and go look at, do all that. Oh yeah, I'm from Jack. I was born in Jackson, Mississippi, but grew up outside of Montgomery. So, and my grandparents from North Mississippi. We were at Graceland. My granddad actually, when he was a teenager, barn dances. Elvis was the entertainment at their local barn wow. dances. He's wow. from yeah, up that he part. They're totally the same age and all that. Baz, he could totally rival you with Elvis knowledge. What, what's the thing you asked me on the air the other day, and I didn't know? I don't know if you remember. What was it? Uh, it might have been a couple of weeks back. It doesn't matter. But Baz, Elvis? Quick, yeah, about Elvis. Yeah. Hey, quickly, if you can, because I know you got to go. Uh, quickly, could you tell him a, a little bit of the story about how you got the lights up at Graceland? Because I, I think he'll he'll appreciate that. So, so my grandmother used to take me to see Elvis. I, I would say uh, her. I called her Mumsy. She's the one who introduced me to Elvis. I said, Mumsy, if you'll take me to the drive-in to see Elvis, I'll buy the popcorn. So my my grandmother, she had all these records at her house, and I would Elvis to this, and I would listen. I mean, the I still have them. The original, right. you know, forty fives or whatever they were, and. So uh, a few years later, there was a guy in town called Jennings Osborne, and he was a, a big time philanthropist who had Christmas lights at Disney and uh, had him on his house. And he always wanted to have him over at Graceland. He was and famous I, here in Arkansas. Yeah, he's famous uh, here in Arkansas, uh, and he puts up JR. these Christmas lights. I mean, I mean they, they were at Disney for like 15, 20 years. Right. So I, I'd go over to meet with at Graceland and convince them to put the lights up. To, so Jennings would put up his Christmas lights in the, in the, in the, uh, across the street. Not not in Elvis's front yard because he's got the the live life size nativity scene. Right. But we put Jenny's lights in, in the backyard and in the, in, the, in the visitor center across the street where all the right. jets are and all that. So I'll never forget the first night, uh, Jr. Is that I had to I can't, went over about nine o'clock at night, and I pull up to the gate and I call and I said, "Listen, I'm here." And say they oh it's nine o'clock. They open the gates. I drive up in my car, grace them, but no 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 tourists, nobody there. Very quiet. I pull up to the house, get out of my car walk in the backyard and there's, you know, this unbelievable light, you know, Christmas light deal that we put up and I'll just make sure the lights were working all that. And I remember calling my grandmother and I, and I remember leaving a message and Mumsy, I am in the backyard of Elvis, nobody around. <laughs> and I said, it, you know, I never could have imagined that, you know, 20 year, 25, 35 years ago, you introduced me to Elvis that I would be involved in doing something at his house for other people, right. and it was just the coolest thing, you know. Had the unbelievable that connection. Of course, she passed away, and she was an amazing woman. But that night was so cool to be able to call her and say that you raised up a little boy to love Elvis, and here I am in the Elvis been, backyard. Doing oh my gosh! So it gives me and chills. And he had the brothers. opportunity to eat dinner at Elvis's dining room table, and 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 passed it up. Lisa, Lisa wow. Marie and Nicholas Cage, that they were married at the time, and I arranged to have Jennings have dinner with uh, Lisa Marie, and they dropped the ropes because for Lisa Marie, it's her house. Oh yeah, so they brought in one of the one of the cooks for Elvis, and they and they cooked up chicken. And uh, Jenny wow. said, Jenny said, you know, would you pass the?" He, the way? he said, "One of my favorite things at night." I looked at Lisa Marie and said, "Would you pass the chicken?" That's yeah. all he said. He said wow. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, wow. that was a, a neat yeah. story. Yeah, good stuff. I, I met Lisa Marie and Priscilla both. So 
Yeah, That's true. amazing, brother. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely have to dive into that. We'll have to get you back on the show sometime and, and let's and let's dive deeper into music because I want to get on before though, uh you talked about liking gospel music, which I, I like all types of music, you know, growing up, family members liked everything. Uh but I I listened to I grew up in the eighties and nineties. It was all kinds of stuff when I was coming yeah. up. Some I wish looking back, I'm like, why did I listen to that? But it is what it is. Uh, but gospel, we've had uh, a gospel legend on here recently, uh, William Lee Golden from the Oak Ridge boys on uh, a couple last end of last season. He's from Bruton, Alabama, which is okay. not far from, you know, Panama city either. So uh, anyway, what were your favorite gospel bands back well, then? Well, it was, you know, like the happy Goodman family, you know, back then the Gaithers, you know, all the those, Gaithers. you know, yep. and the, the, uh, the, the Imperial, Imperials, all you know, actually the Imperials sung with Elvis too. So yep. a lot of it was those groups, those quartets and things. And then there's some people like Andre Crouch and some others. Uh, and then of course, you know, I, I don't want to say what's really weird. I tell you, one of the big, you know, secular hits, you know, one of the country artists at the time was Glenn Campbell. I remember being in, that was one of the, you know, artists that I did remember that my dad enjoyed listening to. So I, I wasn't void of all things uh, secular, but yeah, Happy Goodman, we'd, we'd go to the All You Can uh, Night Gospel Sings. And of course, a lot of it was Elvis related because Elvis yeah. loved those gospel groups too. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, yeah. and it, it's amazing how much I've learned. And, you know, I still consider myself learning. Justin may look at me one day and said, I can't believe you don't know that song or whatever. But really, until I got on this show, I didn't really deep dive into music, but, you know, with Tommy's history you know playing as much music and of course country music it's been fun to to get to know you know justin and his music over the years and, and then of course the old schools like johnny cash and glenn campbell were all yep. familiar with so yeah yeah, yeah it'll and, be fun. and both yeah, of those yeah. guys from arkansas that That's whole right. tie and your dad yeah. the one the one country you really listened to was a guy from arkansas how ironic right. is that you know right yeah so hey baz what's your birthday it's uh october 13 63 there you go, Jr. Uh, if you can pull it up fast enough. So one thing we always do, Baz, uh, when we have a guest, we we tell the uh, uh, number one song in country music on that day. I love it when you were born. So October, October 13th, thirteenth. Yes. What year? Sixty three. Sixty three. So um, I didn't know your birthday before. Yeah, give me so. give me a hint before you before you oh, tell yeah, me. About I will. Yeah, yeah, we all. Uh, no, no one, no one's gonna guess this one because I don't even know it. This may be the, <laughs> this may be the only cut. Now you talk no. about a stumper because Baz, that's part of the, and, and that ties a lot of stuff in. You know, while we started the podcast, Justin said the same thing. Let's do a really good podcast if we're gonna do it. And then, you know, for me having this music knowledge, and I've even ramped mine up because I'm like you. I'm consider myself learning. I, that's all I watch is documentaries. Yeah, I don't watch TV not. shows. You know, I, I'm just trying to learn yeah, cool stuff. Here. So for this to be a song on this thing, usually I could name who <laughs> produced the album, where they recorded it, all that kind of stuff about who the particular song. This it? song, I've all, never heard of, of this song above, or yeah. this artist, and I'm going to probably get decimated on social media from, from country purists. Um, but, I mean, y'all could take a stab, but you're not going to get it. Justin, you're not going to get it. You ain't never heard of this Give person. Give us a either. hint. Give us a hint. I don't know. I'll I'll give you the song and you okay. tell me if you can name the artist. Talk back trembling lips. <laughs> never heard of it. Never heard of it. You, you know, never Freddie heard of You never heard of er, Ernest Ashworth? Oh never God. heard of Ernest <laughs> Ashworth. Who in the heck would have a system that puts Ernest Ashworth as the best song on this day? Come no, on. this is the num that was the number one song in country music on the charts it. that week. That's I don't crazy. Oh my it. gosh. I, yeah, we got well, to do some research on that. Now I'm now I've got to learn something new. I'm gonna learn. I, next time we talk, I'll know so much about Ernest Ashworth it'll blow your mind. <laughs> yeah, no I doubt got about one it. of his well, records somewhere over here. Hey, hey, we didn't even get into tackling Bo Jackson multiple no, times. No, we didn't. That's no, a great story too. we didn't get into uh, a, a lot of things. But man, very much appreciate you you doing this. I know you got a a, a thousand irons in the fire, Baz, and. Uh, I'll see you in the morning at 6 a.m. <laughs> not 8 not eight a.m. I'll see you at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. But, uh, man, really, really appreciate you doing this. And I think our, our listeners are going to really enjoy it. And, no doubt. Um, look forward to hopefully doing it. Uh, again yeah i'd love to yeah jr we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of fun with uh, justin we're, we're excited about it i think everybody the buzz is excited about it. i think everybody who listens is excited about it so we're gonna have some fun adventures down the road if we get him out of bed that's gonna be the yeah key. yeah we're getting, we need to get this road set up done too because we're gonna be back out on the road yeah. here soon so we'll get, yeah. get all that wrapped up but you know you can always call me too or a producer or somebody y'all we can communicate jr i think they too. may be coming to uh, billy bob's yeah come on we're gonna do, we're gonna do that 
We're oh, okay. Well, good. Well, we'll catch up then uh, for sure. And, yeah, we'd love to have you back and tell some more of those stories as, as it goes on. You know, uh, I'm going to be listening to the buzz every morning. I encourage everybody else to. Thank you for your time today, brother. We appreciate you coming in. And let me know. I'll jump on whenever you guys need me. I, I get some info on Justin or, or, or we could do some more music yeah. trivia. Uh, we but do that. Uh, yeah, let's do it for sure. But, ladies and gentlemen, David Basil, thank you so much, brother. We appreciate you. We'll see you soon. Hi, right, guys. Later. Thanks, brother. That was, that was awesome. Yeah, he's yeah. great, man. I, that's the longest I've ever, you know, I've always talked to him. He's, like you said, he's always getting, looking over his notes, getting ready to go MC a show or something, you know. Man, he, he has so much going on. He, 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 and I, I said it multiple times, but he, he's, he's been so good for our state. And the things that he's created or, or helped develop or, uh, you know, pushed or, or whatever you want to say. And just, uh, a really good dude, really yeah. good dude, and, and talented. Yeah, and great story. And you never, you just never know. You would have thought, uh, you know, went to went, by the time he got to Arkansas in the early '80s, coming from Panama City, he was a rocker, you know, or something. You know, he was listening yeah, to, right. to classic gospel, good of the of the day. That's awesome. Uh, I want to dig more into that and Elvis. I mean, uh, that was really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even. I, I had forgotten about how you guys would share the uh, Elvis connection if you will yeah i um i had a couple things here just i wanted to pull up off social media hey and i looked up to uh the um the album uh it's greatest hits and it's and it'll be march 18th and it's that's it it's great it's just justin Moore greatest hits is the title okay. of the album. There you but go. it's in simple. red vinyl yep simple right to the point uh, i had a few things here though off social media that i wanted to share um while we had, while we had a few minutes, I know I've got some uh, viewer mail and Q and A stuff. I've got uh, put back, and I'm trying to accumulate a bunch of it to have a good long session one day. But these are just a few that that clicked this week when I saw them, and thought uh, I'd save them for the show, and we'd we'd get them on here real quick. Um, let's see. This is from Gina Sproggins, Jr. and Jm. I am a Justin Moore fan since day one. In the bed of my Chevy and One Dirt Road are lyrics to my life. Jr. Huge fan of you and the podcast. I just wanted to say I woke up this morning and found out the Reeves brothers have been added to your tour. I am stoked, and I have to tell you that my grandfather used to play country music with their father, Jack Reeves, and I have followed and supported those guys for a long time. Their talent is unbelievable. Anyway, please keep up the podcast, and when different artists or songs are mentioned and just start singing, probably one of my favorite parts of the podcast. And a little side note, I am now a sports fan because of the podcast. The little show awesome. person. Uh, thank you for all you do, and keep on rocking. Horns down, Gina. Uh, hashtag Justin Moore podcast. So that's awesome. Yeah, and I saw that too. I'm excited about that too. I've heard Pete talk about the Reeves brothers. I've, I've heard some of their stuff. Um, I, I, I'm so pumped about this tour and all the guys and gals we're going to get to go out and kick it on the road with. It's going to be fun. So looking forward to that one. Uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. And we'll have Granger on two weeks from today, actually, uh, to talk about the tour because Granger Smith will be out on the tour with us. So we'll have him on uh, – yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. From, yeah, I believe the seventeenth, uh, if I'm not mistaken. That sounds about right. I don't know. I'm still in limbo over here till we get back on the road. We'll, and I'm on we'll my calendar every day. <laughs> I'm actually when we day, get off the when we get done recording today. I, I did a little bit of advancing. I know we've got a couple conference calls tomorrow. Jeff and I've been on some calls. I've got some of our new team members dialed in. But uh, I'm about to get advancing hotels and travel arrangements for us for the next couple months. So I know you and I briefly talked about it, but uh, it's time. You know, it's time to just go ahead and lock it all down. It looks like everything's kind of in place uh, as of now. So uh, anyway, here's another one I've got. This is from Tim Glavin. Tim says, I've been listening to the podcast since it came out. Absolutely love it. I listen to it when I am running, and it helps me pass the time. Was looking for a marathon to run soon and was having a hard time locking in the race I wanted to do. I came across the Cowtown Marathon in Fort Worth and noticed JM is playing the same weekend. Hell yes. Just got my tickets. My wife and I saw Chris Cagle at Billy Bob's a while back, and it was awesome. I cannot freaking wait. By the way, KC Pine Tar episode was fire. I may be partial being from central Missouri, but that state trooper did a hell of an interview and loved the Missouri Arkansas sports talk. Love the podcast. Keep it up. Appreciate that, Tim. Yeah, he did. He did a great job. A lot of people mm -hmm. uh, had positive comments uh, about uh, KC Pine Tar, uh, but uh, yeah, and, and also uh, that's that's cool that you're you're doing the uh, uh, marathon there in uh fort worth and that's a great venue if you've never 
regardless of whomever you see there, that that's a great venue. Yep, Billy no Bob's. Doubt. No doubt. So I know there's some, some tickets left, so everybody get those while they're there. Um, it'll be fun. Uh, and, yeah, and if you're a marathon runner, you can come run a marathon. They go have some barbecue, and they come have some beer and listen to country music. And I uh, think we're going to be doing uh, our uh, morning mayhem show from uh, there live from there six to ten that day. Awesome! That's, there that's we go. the goal, anyway. Nice. All right, got another one here. This is from Brent uh, Jr. Just watched a great movie on Netflix called Greater about Brandon uh, Burrowworth and Arkansas Burlsworth, Razorback. Yeah. Burlsworth, uh, Arkansas Razorbacks. True story. Basil created the the Burlsworth Trophy and award. In his honor. In his honor. So there's a movie called Greater um, on yep. Netflix right now. You can watch what we were just talking about uh, yeah. with Baz a minute yep. ago. I thought that was cool. I saved that. Um, oh, this is funny. I thought uh, – there's two questions on this. This is from Ammon Marshall. He says uh, – has Justin thought of putting a live album together of one of the shows on the new tour? Uh, we had a live album out. Back in the Ryman, was that 18? 16, 17, 18, something like that. Uh, live, live at the Ryman. Um, and we had three guests on there uh, yeah. David Lee Murphy, Chris Jansen, uh, Jansen, and Ricky Skaggs. So yep. go check that out. Yeah, yeah, and 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 talking about that, you know, sometimes uh, Jeff will record the you know the board mix from the show, but that's not a bad idea. We've got some really cool places we're going to go play um, this year, like you know maybe later in the year, might can line something up and actually record just to have for our if nothing else, have for ourselves, maybe record a live show somewhere outside somewhere cool, maybe. Yeah, for sure. Good idea. And, I, and I'm a big fan of live albums, and and uh, a lot of a lot of times people will uh, or artists will record three four nights in a row and you know mesh it together yeah uh we recorded that one night right and so that's a true live show uh recording uh live at the rhyme and, and i'm very very proud of it so if you're looking for a live album please go check that out yeah great record uh next one from ammon is uh my name is ammon i live in Tule county utah does justin play video games if so which ones i play call of duty also did justin ever think about enlisting in the armed forces thanks for the podcast hope to see you in utah this year no and no <laughs> yeah, I, I, i'm not i'm not a gamer at all did you play um, nintendo growing up even yeah nintendo growing up like super mario uh, duck hunt right you know, and then I had a PlayStation when I was probably 12, 13, 14, whatever, when mm -hmm. Madden came out or College Game Day or whatever. Um, but as an adult, no. My uh, Funny story, my wife bought me an Oculus. If you're a gamer, you know what that is. Yeah, it's the a, virtual it's a reality virtual, deal. Yeah, VR thing. And I've, I've never one time put it on, used it. I'm not a gamer. And then... Um, I forget the second question. What was it? Uh, enlisting in the military. Yeah, no. I, 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 I mean, I wish I, I wish I was brave enough to do so, but never was. Yeah, like uh, um, when we had Greg on um, on the episode with, um, with us. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah. With uh, <laughs> when we did the Lucas Hope. Lucas uh, Hogue, I just couldn't remember show. his name for anything. Yeah, when we were Lucas, Greg was saying that you know it's not for everybody. It's it's maybe you know and it, but he doesn't want, you know. I'm so there. thankful that there are men Absolutely. and women out there who are brave enough and have that conviction and have yep. that calling. Uh, and my and, and my buddies because we get to do what we get to do because of men and women like. Like and like those. Greg said, he wants us to be normal. So when they get back home from deployment, it, everything's how they remember it. It's supposed to be that way. Um, I know. Right. I think about even like my fraternity brothers who are still active in the military and do different things. I mean, I, I got. I'm looking at pictures the other day. I got a buddy that's over in the Middle East showing me pictures of how their bathrooms work over there and stuff. You talking about disgusto? But um, and and then a couple others that are stationed here and there. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's the. They were the. They're the. That's who I would want protecting my clan if i needed some help from the outside it's these guys they're they're soldiers i, I could see that right. i now looking back i could tell they were always that way they were they were you know the best of the bunch so yeah thank you to all our men and women uh that serve for sure nor did i looking back um you know you think about man that would have been great to have done but i i didn't really ever have the the notion either i was yeah 
Like you, I didn't have the, the bravery skill. Uh, I was focused I a, on uh, things that I shouldn't have been. Probably. Yeah, that and then that too <laughs> yeah. for certain. Uh, let's see what was this other one I had here. Uh, cute one, Jordan. Lethal scent of his uh, his little boy dancing. Said if we ever need a Kate needs a model or Justin needs a backup dancer, hit him up. Pretty funny. Uh, where's uh. I was just oh, our buddy Rhett Fisher just hit me up asking. Uh, I'm currently headed to New Orleans for some new job training. I don't know the area. I know you guys talk about Louisiana on the show. Any places I should try food wise down there? Rhett, I hadn't been down there in a few years. To be honest with you, since the pandemic and stuff, Sharice and I just we've been through there going back to Homa, but I hadn't been. But I'm sure all the staples are up. I love Arno's. Uh, is my favorite restaurant there. I mm. take all my buddies there. First That's time my- I ever ate escargot. So it was good. fantastic. Fantastic. So uh, Arno's or, you know, you can go to Felix's if you want oysters across from Acme. Um, you know, it's a ton of I would of good suggest places. getting off the beaten path. Don't don't go to the French Quarter and these, these places. You know, your phone does a great job now. You, you hit, you know, whatever type of restaurant. Get off the beaten path uh, yeah. a little bit and find a place that's got good reviews, yeah. uh, I would say. Yeah, there's t- there's tons of good stuff down there. They're red, so good luck. Be safe. Uh, let us know how it goes down there. Um, let's see, what was this other one I had here? And I got something happened with my phone the other day. So all it re every question that I've taken off here and put down to ask fu- in the future that we've already asked somehow it popped them all back up as unread. So now there's from like 40 weeks ago. There's questions on here, and I'm like, and it, but I don't I can't find a way to filter which ones are new, and which ones. You know, I can't put it in newest to the latest, right. one, you know. Right. Uh, so that's all I had on that, really, buddy. I was—I uh, thought I had some other stuff, but I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna get a list together um, for some new Q and A. So y'all make sure to use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast uh, when you're uh, interacting with us on social media. Uh, Justin Cole Moore. Make sure it's got the blue check mark. I'm Jr. The Handler. Uh, you can also send them to jrthehandler.com on the chat page there. Hey, and I also talked to Chase, our merchandise manager in Nashville, and we've got new Justin Moore podcast T-shirts um, in stock. So y'all go on nice. and get you some of those. Uh, and they've got more um, coffee mugs in, uh, back in stock. So y'all get some. And of we those. also have new merch coming out for the tour. Yes, uh, that yeah. you guys will be able to to access for sure. Yeah, as soon as we get that, I'll, we'll, I'll bring some home and I'll model some or hold some up or something and show everybody when, when we get some new stuff. Because cool. I, I know you approve some of the designs and stuff. They look killer. Yeah, some new- really cool stuff that I would actually, if it didn't have my name on it, I would actually wear. <laughs> hey, I'm going to wear it. I'm That'd be kind of a promoting. douche move. Oh, for yeah. Me you cannot wear your own merch it. to no. your own show. I've told people that. No. You cannot wear your own merch. I can. No. But if I was in the band, you can't, unless it's a team function or something like back in the 70s they might have would you know a softball game or something no but you can wear another band's merch to right. another show you don't have to wear the merch of the band you're going to see like you can wear a a different rock t-shirt or, or country t- or concert tee to a different Tour to watch tea, a different band yeah. yeah but you can't wear your own yeah but you can wear right. but you don't have like say if i go see hank jr i can wear a ricky skaggs t-shirt that's still fine right you know, right. but I can't wear a Jr. the Handler T-shirt. You know, but when I was it, hey, I tell you, this is crazy. I don't know. I need to get on him too. But I was in John Party's music video for uh, Tequila Little Time, and uh, I wore my Handler shirt, shamelessly self-promoting myself, as you know. Uh, and they blurred it out. I'm like, what? Is this no logo? What? That's my logo? Yeah. I'm like, I didn't realize Come it till on, way man. later. I did uh, uh, anyway. So weak. Yeah, I know, right? So, but uh, yeah, and I've got some of those back in. But we, I'm looking forward to. I know you approved a new baseball cap. I'm looking forward to to the yeah. those baseball cats. Yeah, you, it's you it's in. it's pretty cool. Yeah. So and I think it may just just be my logo or or whatever it was. I, I liked it and I was like, man, I might could wear that. It's a ba- it's Maybe. the beta hook. It's a hook with the beta hook. Around. It's a hook. That's right. Yeah. It's a beta hook. It's a hook. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I say we take a quick break for our sponsors. Uh, come back, wrap it up. Uh, Let's do it again. Uh, great to have uh, Basil on. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. Um, great dude, and, and uh, I thought it was a really interesting conversation. Oh yeah, I had a blast, man! I can't wait to to chop it up with y'all on your uh, morning show and get him. And back we missed 
and we didn't touch on so many things. I know. We got to get we got to get all those good we stories. Just scratch the surface yeah. so we'll bring him back on. We'll also in the future get my other co-host on because they have uh a lot of interesting things yeah. uh, going on as well. Oh yeah, you know you know how it is. We got we got we're all working. We got to tap our friends. <laughs> that's, that's what you that's do. It. You tap your friends. Hey, that's on. it. <laughs> Jump on. All right, guys, we'll be right back here in a few minutes on the Justin Moore podcast. Have you ever passed a construction site where those tough-looking orange and white machines are working? Skid steer loaders, excavators, that's Bobcat. And that's our sponsor for today's episode. Now, if you think of Bobcat as construction equipment only, you should take a look over at Bobcat.com. Bobcat makes mowers, compact tractors, utility vehicles, all kinds of equipment you can use on your personal property. When you have a Bobcat machine in your shed, You'll look forward to that list of projects on the weekend. Go to bobcat.com, visit your local dealer, and see what I mean. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas, at Central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic benton arkansas uh, again that's 119 west south street in benton arkansas and if you're not local we ship everywhere so uh you can find us at shop this and see all that we have to offer all that my wife kate has to offer i should say facebook you can find us at shop this little piggy ar and instagram you can find us at shop this little piggy ar but check us out it's called this little piggy and uh See what we got to offer. Shop this little piggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore podcast. Visit easyliquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail whiskey and join the blue collar swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now, pour Jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great. Inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers, and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. Uh, we didn't even do this to top the show, but I'm sure everybody gathers it by now. I'm J.R. The Handler. That's Justin Colmore. Um, we were talking last week about the Super Bowl coming up. Uh, it's set and locked. How about those games? I just saw this, made me think of this. Our old tour buddy from the uh, Paisley Tour, Mickey Guyton, just got tapped to sing the National Anthem. She's a hell of a singer, too. Awesome. That should be good. Awesome. I hope she, I'm sure yeah, she'll crush good it. good for her. Yeah, I talk about uh, – I Better we her about than I, me. Yeah, we were talking about ice storms off the road. I remember one time uh, out on tour, their their bus had some problems, and we ended up uh, stopping all of the caravan there and got her and her crew and everybody loaded up on the other buses and kept the train rolling. Um, yep. So, yeah, that'll be awesome. I'll make sure to tune in. I was already excited about the halftime show, but um, Mickey's singing. I'm the stoked about off. the halftime show. Me too. We talked about it briefly last week. I know some people have week. been like, eh, I don't know. Oh, I'm stoked cool. about it. I think it's for everybody our age. Oh, yeah. Everybody in their, everybody in their 30s, 40s. I mean, is, man. This is, yeah, early 50s, early 50s. Hey, so what about the game now? It's locked and going to happen. we got Matt Stafford and the Rams going off against uh, Joe Burrow, Joe Money. 
Well, I I, I can't pull for Joe Burrow because mm-hmm. he went to LSU. Um, yep. But, man, I, I hate to be a prisoner of the moment, but, boy, he reminds me of Brady. His moxie. And just kind of the way he carries himself. Um, He's killing it on the hills on the hills of Brady's retirement. Oh yeah. By the way, uh, which was official today. Uh, today, when we're recording yeah, this, but February first uh, as we're recording. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm pulling for Stafford, man. Like I, I, anybody who gets drafted by uh, by the lines and has to spend a decade in purgatory basically yeah. like he did. He, I think he was there 11 years. Uh, I'm pulling for him. And he yeah. always, he always got this rap JR that, you know, he would always make a mistake or he would do this and he would lose you the game. I think it was probably because he was playing with less than auspicious players around him. Yeah. I you mean, know? Detroit, I mean, I mean so, he, he, he goes to L.A. first year in the Super Bowl, whether they win it, whether they don't, I don't know. But they're at home. Yeah, um, which is could be the I, second I'm, I'm time kinda, that ever happened. I'm kind of pulling for him. You know, it's a, it's the second time it's right. happened, and it's happened in back-to-back seasons. This is crazy. Tampa Bay last year, L.A. Yep. this year. And we were talking about, so. you know, I can remember watching um, Detroit growing up. Barry Sanders, one of my favorite players to watch. He was fantastic. But, yeah, he just run around. Everybody was killing him. It was like it was like my granddad used to tell me was watching Archie Manning play for the Saints back in the day. I saw why, this. Somebody, oh, that's a great point. It's why he retired early. And then you know who else retired from the Lions early? Megatron. Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Yep, Megatron. Yep. I mean, you, I mean, what are you going to do? So, I saw this. It was pretty funny. Somebody put on the uh, – on the on the uh, Instagram or Twitter, it was uh, Stafford playing, Eminem performing. This is the closest Detroit has ever been to actually being in a Super Bowl. But and we lo- and good. I love Detroit. That's no, not, I mean I love Detroit. I've always had a good time. We got a bunch of good buddies up there. But yeah, I, you know I'm not going to make my prediction or say who I'm pulling for yet. Uh, I'm going to do find out who has the mo- which team has the most guys from Alabama on their team. If there are none, I would be shocked. Uh, I'm gonna I'll, I'll make a decision then. I'm. As of now, I'm definitely leaning Matt Stafford, you know, played at Georgia, uh, Texas guy, uh, that whole thing. Um, but I want to see what my Bama guys are on each of those teams. I haven't watched either one of them very much, obviously, because I'm not a Bengals fan nor a, a Rams fan. The but, only uh, reason I would pull for the Bengals is because the, their backup quarterback is a former starter and record holder for Arkansas. Yep. Brandon Allen. BA, yeah. Uh, and so – Love for him to get a ring, but at the same time, I can't pull for Joe Burrow. Right. I mean, come on. Well, well and the only – what, what did I say? I mean, let's, that, let's, let's say this. Like, when Cam Newton was in the Super Bowl, did you root for him or against him? Oh, against him all day. And he, they were playing the um, uh, the Broncos, so that – and, you know. But I – um, you know, I saw a thing, too, that was the only other two quarterbacks to win the Natty. Was it the Natty and the – uh, Super Bowl was Joe Namath and Joe Montana. Is that right? I I don't know that. I, I do that. know that there there's some stat out there that like very few, if any, have won in a span of three years. Have won the national championship, the Heisman, and the Super Bowl in the span of three years. In a span of three years, yeah, that's, which obviously Burrow could could do, but uh, yeah. I don't I don't want to see his <laughs> ass smoking a cigar again. Uh, I just uh, I'm, I'm tired of it. Nope, um, not happening. I'm sorry, Louisiana. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I just I just can't. Normally I wouldn't care, but they beat us that year, so yep, he's on he's on my poo list. So anyway, we'll get off that. Hey, I know we got we got to get on to it. We got stuff to do. We got to get on the road here in a few days. Um, uh, we're going, as this airs on uh, the 3rd of Thursday, we'll be uh, at SeaWorld this Friday, February 7th. If you're in the Orlando area, come check us out. It's an afternoon show. Southman's coming. I know. I'm, I'm pumped. Um, got on the 16th of February, Jackson, Mississippi. We're playing at the Rodeo. Y'all come check us out that night. That'll be fun. Then we're going to be, as we talked about earlier, Baz them going to be there. We've got some friends coming to run a marathon, all kinds of cool stuff. We're going to be in the – Stockyards of Fort Worth, Texas on February 25th at Billy Bob's. Uh, and then we've just, as just, we talked a few times on here about the tour. We've released all the dates for that. There's 
pre-sale codes and all kinds of fun stuff. I know tickets are, tickets are moving really good, so I jump on them if you want to get some good seats now. Uh, we've got some Arizona shows. Uh, we're doing the show with Straight and Little Rock. We're going to be in Alabama. Got a couple of close to home for me this year. I'm already cringing, as you can imagine. Uh, Pensacola and then a Auburn, basically, show. I'm like, Ooh. Well, we so. got Little Rock. So you oh, know yeah. I'm cringing. Oh, oh I, me too on that one. That's a double cringer for me. If you're cringing, I'm cringing. Uh, and it's a bunch of fun stuff, a bunch of cool shows. I know I was looking at some of these places we're going. We're going out to Washington and Idaho and West Virginia, Nebraska and Kansas and Minnesota. It's going to be fun, man. I'm looking forward to it. So everybody jump on justinmoremusic.com. Uh, look at the tour dates. You can, get, mu- you can uh, get tickets through there. You can find all the dates. You can get links to this podcast, all, all the cool stuff that's coming up that's available in the world of JM and uh, music. Music, uh, like Justin mentioned earlier, on all podcast forms and platforms, you can listen to Morning Mayhem with our guest today, Basil and Justin, and their other two co-hosts. Uh, same place you could find this Justin Moore podcast on any social media or any uh, listening platform or anywhere they have podcasts, you can find this. I know we mentioned last week, Cody's made sure to go through and uh, dot our T's. Uh, dot our I's and cross our T's on all the platforms. It's everywhere you could find the podcast now, so y'all make sure to go check that out. Uh, Justin Moore podcast also has an Instagram page. I want to encourage everybody to go follow. We keep updates on the show, some pictures and fun stuff throughout the week. Um, so do that. And like I said earlier, if you use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast and send in questions, if I don't answer them, I'm logging them back and I'll eventually get to them. And if somehow you think it's been too long, just send them to me again. Cause I'm definitely not a pro at this part of that yet. Uh, maybe we'll get us a produce once we get our first award. Cause this is going to be an award winning podcast. We're going to name check. this or yeah. check. Or check or, or anything, but we're going to get a we're going to get a uh, uh, Cody's just got too much to do. We're going to get a, another producer, an intern, or somebody to help with some of that kind of stuff. But um, I thought about that, and Basil said it best. It's going to be the the name of today's podcast is going to be "Here to Win" because we're here to win too. And yet, along with all you guys' help out there, just like when Justin was the last fan voted ACM New Artist of the Year, uh, it took everybody out there to do it. It's going to take everybody out in podcast land to help pull this podcast up so we can win an award for this thing too. So appreciate y'all each and every week. Continue to use the hashtag. Just I, I know we say it, and I really don't know exactly how, but click, like, rate, subscribe, notification, any of those little different things you can click. Comment. Looking, comment. Anytime you're on there and you can do do every little thing you can. It we all have helps. no idea why that helps, but we we say been it's told an algorithm. I've been told it's an algorithm. So, but it, it definitely helps, and that keeps it up there. That way, we'll get these know. awards awards rolled in, so I can get me some nice bronze awards like uh, Basil had all stacked up behind him. Or yeah, you know, that was hey, pretty impressive. I, I am, I'm gonna put a request in now in the air, so I can't. So it's it's out in the world, so I don't tell Joey or Pete, and they forget. Uh, I know we got talked the other day. You're getting a new plaque for your office. We got to find a spot for it uh, to celebrate yeah. your ten number ones here soon. So maybe that might yeah, be. Yeah, we got to find a. A spot in here you know i, I see uh, strategically i left a little place right here so maybe uh, we gotta maybe, get you one maybe also jr's will go there right we go. there we'll make it happen yeah. so but that was fun i had a great time today uh y'all go listen to yeah, justin in the mornings and y'all uh, like i said I, the, the when i'm up and listening it is a hoot i i enjoy it i mean i'm like i feel like i'm a well, kid, he said like it, said it's, a kid it's barbershop radio yeah i mean it, it's it, just even if you're not a razorback fan we <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, we talk a little, a little bit about the hogs and, just and to a couple BS. of the players, and then it's just us BS. And I mean, yeah, whatever. Th- comes I'll, up. I'll give you, I'll give you a rundown of a few of the the words used today on the show: <laughs> areola, nipple ring, uh, soaking, hard in my mouth. Um, <laughs> I, I, that's that's a true story. And all this is on public radio? My gosh. Uh, this anyway. is on terrestrial radio, 103.7 The Buzz. Get the Buzz app and listen. Uh, we have a great listener uh, who calls in just about daily from Minnesota uh, who's a fan, uh, which you and I talked about, I think, yeah. last week or the week prior. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you anybody can listen 6 to 10 Central and then you can listen, as you said, um, any day. So go listen to this podcast and then listen uh, to the show uh, yep. via podcast or the Buzz app live or vice versa. Yep. Yep. It's, it's, uh, you got tons of stuff to do. And I know we've got uh, coming up, like you said, a couple weeks we're going to have Granger. Uh, next week, I'm hoping to have Muscadine Bloodline yep. guys on. They're in the studio this week, so maybe they can jump on next week with us. And they got new music so, coming out. Yeah, and, so the, uh, so next week we should have um, 
On the 10th, we should have Musky Dime Bloodline. On the 17th, we should have Granger Smith. Uh, look forward to catching up with with uh, both those acts. For yep, sure. and we and we've got to get and we've got a we may have a, a basketball uh, analyst come on too here since uh, basketball is about to be March Madness. We've He's got to, good we, to go. He just couldn't come on today. Perfect. So yeah, we're gonna get PB Pat Bradley. That's who we're talking about. Arkansas yeah, SEC network uh, analyst. The shooter. The shooter. The shooter. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you all for tuning in and tuning out today with us. We enjoyed it. These two high-tech rednecks, thanks for uh, peasing our egos every week and listening. Sorry it was so sports-related today for those yep. who don't love sports, but that was our guest. So. Hey, that's why I, f I flipped it back on music there at the end. I was waiting my shot to flip it back on music so we could make, continue to call this a music podcast. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate you all. Tune in next week here on the Justin Moore Podcast. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 36, Shortcuts and Setbacks. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. But hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Proverbs 21.5 Have you ever tried to save some time by taking a shortcut? Maybe you found your way blocked by a closed road, a traffic jam, and ended up having to travel twice as far as you would have had you stuck to the regular route from the get-go. Or have you ever changed the TV to the other football game with only a few seconds left on the game clock to later find out that the play of the season took place after you'd left the channel? Now you're forever relegated to watching a taped replay. Have you ever decided to take the scenic route only to find yourself stuck on a tiny two-lane roads with no way to get back to the interstate without traveling another 50 miles? In my business, shortcuts usually don't work out too well. If you hurry through rehearsals, don't run the new material enough, and go on stage not fully prepared, you'll find yourself terrified while standing in front of thousands of people because you can't remember the first words to the next verse. Getting there for sure is much more important than getting there quickly. Shortcuts that are not well thought out can become lengthy detours. Let's all make the day count. 